Hello Anne, a warm, warm welcome and I cannot thank you enough for very kindly agreeing to be interviewed, especially as it's such a subject that I know was very painful at that period of your life and I'd really appreciate you going into detail about what that experience of having a leg ulcer was like for you. Thank you. Well, painful is the word that comes to mind uh, straight away, Ellie, um, because I thought I just knocked my leg and uh, I went to a chiropodist and I said to her, what do you think that is? And she said, hmm, it's only a sort of, you know, small round red mark. And she said, oh, I don't know what it is, um, but I think you should get it checked up. And uh, she said, mention it to your GP. Um, and I did. And I have to say the GP wasn't much interested at the time. <laughs> Uh, and then I ended up with a consultant uh, who looked at it and he said, oh, I'm not sure what it is. He said, I think, I think, I think you should try a bit of Vaseline on it. Well, <laughs> you know, Vaseline didn't work, obviously. And, uh, but it was still painful. And then eventually, luckily, um, I was referred to somebody in St. Thomas's hospital and uh, immediately they said it's uh, that's a vascular problem. But it was, it, it was a big worry because, you know, I didn't know what it was. I knew it was something that I ought to do something about, but nobody could tell me what to do. So could you describe your journey from the moment you met the consultant and describe um, how you felt in yourself? Well, I, I keep using the word painful. I mean, the journey was painful. The uh, What turned out to be a leg ulcer was also painful. And um, they were, I saw several people in St. Thomas's Hospital, and luckily it was across the river from where I worked. So I was lucky from that point of view. Um, and I saw some very good people there. But um, the whole thing took a, a lot of time and uh, I felt we weren't getting anywhere fast. But in the end, of course, my leg was operated on because Vaseline didn't do much good, I can tell you, as you know. But it, I was operated on and uh, then... Uh, you know, it, I was in a hospital for a bit and uh, they were extremely good there because they were experts at dealing with a particular problem. But of course, since then, I've heard of a lot of people who haven't been properly diagnosed and, you know, are continuing to have problems. And uh, some people, you know, it's got worse for them and... Um, uh, it's, it's gone to extremes. So I think diagnosis, proper diagnosis right at the start um, is essential. And uh, I have to say, Ellie, later on I had pneumonia and still leg ulcers. <laughs> and uh, when I left St. Thomas's Hospital, because I had um, very sore heels as well, it wasn't simply one mark, it was very sore heels, which were associated, I think, with a vascular problem. And uh, that's where you and I started talking quite a lot. And I, I have to say, you know, there were days I was so, I felt almost desperate. And I was very pleased to have your support, which uh, was essential in this situation. When, when you say desperate, Anne, can you describe what you mean by desperate? You felt desperate because you'd had your surgery um, and you felt it was excellent um, surgery and um, the results were starting to look good. But when you say desperate, can you describe that in a little more detail for me? Yes, I, I'd had the surgery, obviously, on the... Uh... 
calf, but I had very sore heels. And th that I think was somehow asso associated um, with the leg wound. And I know when I was, ha uh, when I was in hospital with pneumonia, Nobody seemed bothered about this. The, I was now back in Cardiff. Nobody seemed very bothered about the heels. But the heels were so painful, uh, I couldn't put, and I was in bed. I wasn't able to, to make myself comfortable. So I didn't sleep very much because <laughs> I couldn't get the heels in the right space and they, they weren't properly protected. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Because one of my cats has got an act. Yeah, cat. <laughs> okay, okay, me. Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, so that's what I mean by you know when you don't sleep, you're in pain. You've had your surgery. You've now got pneumonia, but you've still got these sore heels. Um, well, very difficult to, to explain, but, uh, you know, you helped me by talking about it at the time, Ellie. So what would your advice be to people? Uh, you've mentioned um, people aren't aware or lack of diagnosis. What, what would your advice be to your family, friends? Do you have advice? And what to do? Um, while I was in St. Thomas's, I got an adjournment debate allocated to me in the House of Commons on the subject of leg wounds. And, you know, they're very difficult to get hold of those uh, adjournment debates. So I arranged with my doctors to go in my wheelchair to the chamber of the House of Commons and make a speech there about leg wounds and how much they were costing the NHS, you know, because they weren't properly diagnosed and people were going backwards and forwards to hospitals for dressings and um, that wasn't helping them too much. So um, I thought it was important to get the case out. So uh, it's there somewhere on film <laughs> if you want to see it. But the health minister at the time promised all kinds of things um, because, you know, it's, it's a huge sum of money that's um, spent in the health service trying to sort of patch up leg wounds without necessarily giving them the proper diagnosis. So that's what I mean. And so it needs pressure, continuing pressure, as you're putting on and uh, as others are uh, as well. Um, to make sure that everybody is properly aware from, you know, GPs right through. And then the other th point I would make is when you come out of hospital, you're given these tight stockings uh, to wear. Well, most people can't put them on, let alone wear them. They're just too tight for people. And a friend of mine, the, the other end of town, um, she had something similar and she would go out through her front door, outside her front garden, and ask somebody in the street to help her getting the stocking on. Well, <laughs> you know, again, that is ridiculous. And there aren't all that many, not enough district nurses, as you well know, the numbers have dropped. And so, um, you know, you need pressure as uh, your, your um, clubs have been putting on uh, the authorities, but it has to be continuous until the system has improved. Um, as, as you know, it's a global problem now, and we're all living to a greater age. So do you see the accountability for raising Venus awareness to become a governmental issue. You know, governments globally should take responsibility. You've alluded to cost of care, but also quality of life is impacted. Individuals experiencing what you've just been through is horrific. And so where do you see the future going? Well, I would hope greater awareness 
and that comes through pressure, um, pressure certainly on local authorities, pressure on uh, GPs, pressure on central government who dole out the money, for example, and um, uh, making the point to them that actually they can save money in the end if their people are more aware of what a leg wound is and how it should be treated and how aftercare uh, is important and uh, you know just repeating this I'm afraid like with all campaigns over and over again and thank you so much for sharing your story. It is so emotional um, and I cannot thank you enough and to be part of this. And um, I wish you all the best for the future. And as you know, my motto is look after your legs. Take care and thank you so, so much for your time today. And your cat is obviously a very famous cat now. <laughs>